In the Revishal Citizens Militia, there is only one Officer Superstar. This is his story. Now that we're done talking to Joyce, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can do. In particular, I think we can talk to Everart. Because I'm sure he'll have something to say to us or we'll have something to say to him. So let's head over there. Oh. This light is on. I uh, guess because it's so late. I don't actually remember the lights being on. Is there anything else to see here? Oh, hey, what's that? And our working class woman is standing there at almost nine o'clock at night. I wonder if her feet hurt. She's been standing on her feet reading books for a very long time. Oh, money. We're getting rich here. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Are we wearing our drama shirt? Oh, we are. Okay. Whew. Okay. Emergency averted. We also can stop by the Whirling and Rags and pay Gart for tonight's room. And then also, I believe 2100 hours or 9 p.m. is the time. Oh, 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 give me that. All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters, washing the filth away. Wow, this view that we have here is the most bird's eye view we've had so far. I guess through Shivers, because our Shivers is higher than it has been historically because of some of the gear we're wearing. And I think one of our thoughts give us more Shivers, I'm not sure. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. What am I doing? Looking up at the sky, cold water dripping from your hat. Well, what do I see up there? Grey sky like great battleships, clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. And how does that rain feel? Humid. Your coat shields you from the rain while the city shivers around you. Before we continue, check this out. The whole building the bookstore is attached to, which contained all the failed businesses we learned about, is itself destroyed. I didn't get that. I didn't realize the building had been destroyed, just that the businesses were gone. Let's do it. What is in the West? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. Oh, so there are motorboats. So Joyce just takes her sloop because she's hoity-toity like that. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet beyond the Bay of Revachol. Ghosts rise into the sky. Who are you? Ghosts? The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. What is down the shore, Mr. Shivers? Urban coastline, rain dripping off etonite-covered roofs, cinder blocks left over from half-finished construction, a defunct research and development building once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. Well, that's a lot of cool stuff. Maybe we can get to it as other areas open up. And beyond that? Coal City, end of all lines. Oh, wow, you can see over here in the corner, you can see all of the scabs doing their talking. Run our fingers through our dampened hair. Your hair is an oily mess flecked with ash from neighboring coal plants. Smoke stacks rise somewhere in the distance. What's in the east? The great gates of the industrial harbor are locked. A chill runs down your back. You shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide. Let's clench our teeth to stop shuddering. Behind the gates, heaps of supply crates, red and blue metal shipping containers, slick with rain. The Greater Revachol Industrial Harbor is an artificial mountain range. Immense wealth resides within, and immeasurable poverty in its shadow. I wonder if our shivers had been higher to begin with, whether we would have experienced all of this stuff earlier in the game before we actually had any context for what was over here in the in the northwest or over in the harbor or anything like that. And beyond the harbor? La Drissienne, King Dries Passenger Harbor. Cruise ships flanked by dock arms, cranes watching over the mouth of the river distributary. What's across the distributary? Kuron, the lower middle class. Distributary after distributary cuts the city blocks in half. Seven-story buildings trail off into the rain. What is beyond the Quran? 
A silvery curtain of rain over the houses. The class divide. Interesting. It doesn't rain where the wealthy people are? You have never been there. They don't need the law east of the river. Okay. And what's in the north? Capeside apartments. Tower blocks crowd one another. 4.46 millimeter bullets still lodged in their war-torn stone walls. Is that the apartment building we went to where Martin Martinez is and where we died because we couldn't use a chain cutter? I don't remember the name of it. I don't remember that we even learned the name. Hallways collapse from the mortar hits of a war that was lost long ago. Clotheslines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. The evening news. And closer to here? A yard. Rain falls onto the roof of a woodshed. The lingering odor of decomposition mixes with that of damp soil. And what's in the south? A traffic jam. Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside, drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. The statue of a king shudders. He too is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. Ah, uh, yes. We're familiar with that. What's on the other side? The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork, and tar stretches northward. Four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snows melt in Jamrock. This is one of the reasons I think maybe if we had had higher shivers, we would have had this happen before. What is Jamrock? Rivershol is the capital of the world. Jamrock is the capital of Rivershol. Droplets form on your eyelashes. Thank you, Shivers. It's home. Jamrock is home? Where the hood? Where the hood? Where the hood at? I have a brother in the cut. Where the hood at? Are we singing a song with Shivers over the city? Why am I not there? To be in Martinez, where no one goes, at the runoff point of a long forgotten canal in the whitest part of town. In the shadow of the day, the revolution failed. What am I doing here? Standing in the rain, looking north, where Jamrock Rock City stretches inland. Yes, we are standing in the rain, looking north. That's like when someone calls you and you're like, hey, what are you doing? And they answer with, I'm talking to you. Let's shudder and look further. In the rain-swept distance above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 hunches in the rain. I never really thought about silk being made in a mill. That's an interesting idea. I wonder if they have the silkworms all in there and that's part of the mill. Precinct 41 is up there, so maybe we can go there at some point too. Your vision blurs. You wipe your face with your hand. The rain stings your eyes, making you look up and blink. What's above? Coalition era statics hang like apparitions under the cloud cover. Way up there, where rain forms, rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. It's really neat to just have these airships up there hanging around, almost, I guess, like blimps or something. The setting of this game is so interesting. It's like not steampunk. It's not cyberpunk. It's not post-apocalyptic. It's just this weird amalgam. I'm sure there's a term for it. I just am not aware of it. And let's finish the thought by saying, motherfucker. This rain will not let up anytime soon. At least we are dressed for it. Let's keep moving. Okay, Kim. Let's keep moving. So let's head in here to the Whirling and Rags. Not going to bother talking to any of these people because I don't believe they have anything new to say. But we can certainly give Gart our money. Can I help you? About my bill for tonight, Gart. Got the 20 real? I do have it. Don't sound excited or anything. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. Yes, I'm sure you won't let us forget. How could anyone forget, asshole? That's what I'm saying, Half-Light. Goodbye, Gart. We just leveled up and got a skill point, but instead of spending it, we're going to take the advice of Ratcliffe in the comments. He said we should wait to spend points until we need to redo a white check. And there are plenty of white checks that we can do right now. So we're just going to hold off on everything. Even though we did get quite a few thoughts and we could open a slot for that, I think it'd be cooler to 
to wait until we really need to get something done. Okay, we're going to work our way over to Everart. Man, that Shivers thing was so cool. The depth of the history of Elysium is astonishing. I did read that this game is based on a tabletop role-playing game, but I had honestly forgot how in-depth those universes can be. A rusting control panel with several knobs. Two buttons marked Mush and Aret are faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Marsh. On. Aret. Off. I could swear we did this already. Let's press off. The crane stands tall, proud, erect, and still. Yeah, alright, so let's press on. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. See, so it's just suspended there, just waiting for somebody to do what we did. So I just wonder if there's something in here. I mean, obviously there must be, because why would the game do it? It's sort of like Chekhov's rifle. And with a surprisingly quiet thunk, the crane places the container down. That was quiet. Also, this is wild. It looks like it's creating a, a bridge over the stuff here. I guess it's hanging on the back. I didn't look that carefully. The harbor sleeps as the strike rages in the distance. The crane can rest again, now that its purpose has been fulfilled. Its purpose? What do you mean? Moving this container, of course. For this purpose it was built. For this purpose it has acted. And now it will rest. Ah, well rest well, crane. Rest well. You have earned it. I can't see how that was worth the records. Except for seeing the crane in action. Which I admit was satisfying. Yeah, right, Kim. I'm with you. That was that was pretty cool. I expect it to be louder, though. Okay. Let's go check out the crane or the container. And then continue to work our way to Everart. Assuming we don't get entirely sidetracked by this crate, this container. Before you stands a cargo container. Just one of many in the yard. Lieutenant, I think there's something special about this container. I'd bet money on it. Ah, is this like your thing with that wall again? <laughs> no. If you look carefully, you'll notice this does not have a like or a subscribe on it. Please pay attention, Kim. No, it's totally different. I don't want to paint it. I'm just drawn to it. There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? Well, obviously it's hanging from the crane and it's standing out like a sore thumb, but we're going to say, I don't know, Kim. It feels special. It's a cargo container, detective, just like all the others. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to talk to the Union, right? Yeah, but we're also here to investigate the murder. Knock on the door. No reply. Yeah, I'm not sure what we expected from that. Let's open the door. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. Mechanically locked? But you can see the manual mechanism right here. To your left. The lieutenant oh. considers your actions with some puzzlement. Persuade the door to open? Whoa. It's impossible at 18. We have a five rhetoric. I know we have some kind of clothing we could add at least one point to, but even one point's not going to help us. And it says been in the world for two days. So maybe after we've been in the world longer, we'll get more bonus. I'm not sure. I'm not even going to bother because I don't want to lose the morale. So nothing more to do here for now. Let's leave and go talk to Everart. I have to go get more magnesium, I guess. I should have done that. For t -t -t -t. Let's see if Easy Leo has anything to say. Anything new to say. Oh, hey, mister. I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. I'm not sure she was giving them baths. I had some questions for you, if that's not too much trouble. No trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. It's like that old saying goes, wisdom withers if not shared. And old Leo is always up for sharing. I've noticed that. What's in that container over there? Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. That's what Kim thought. Told you. Oh, oh, Kim. 
Come on, man. Find the maturity. Damn. Fine, we're off. Let's go talk to Everett. Nothing here when I hit tab. There's Everard. Or oh, I guess it could be Edgar. We can't even tell. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you've already sat on that chair. Gee, thanks, Everard. Look at all of these prompts. If last episode was the Joyce show, I suspect this episode is probably going to be the Everard Claire show. I'm not going to talk to him about the drug trade yet, because that might just upset him. I don't want to open that door because that's just asking to cooperate with him. So let's ask about the lost gun. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. That's great, Everard. Wait a second. Are you the one with the lazy eye or is Edgar the one with the lazy eye? Because this is a picture with a lazy eye. Then going back to this business here, you're just going to worry everybody if you're asking everyone about a gun oh i guess that's the point that's great you're a jackass your gun will be found harry let me assure you of that it's just a matter of time and effort yeah something tells me you've already found it ever the only way to find it seems to be working with him he might even be holding your gun hostage hold on could he really hold my gun hostage who knows only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Wait, the gun may have been bought from Roy's pawn shop. Have your men factored that in? Yes. Thank you for the hot tip regarding your lost gun, Harry. My men have indeed factored in that you pawned it. He's actually making fun of us when he says that last bit with the air quotes. Now, please, let the professionals do their job. Kick back, Harry. Relax. I have great guys on this. You focus on what's important. Building our relationship for the good of Martin A. I will not be blackmailed with this gun business, Everard. Harry, Harry. I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. You don't own the whole neighborhood. Kids could be playing gun roulette with it as we speak. Teenage gangs could be arming themselves. Get a hold of yourself, Harry. You completed track down your gun? But... We didn't. I assure you, we are working on locating the missing sidearm as well. Yes, we definitely are, which is why we're talking to you, Everard. Excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun-finding competition on our hands. Well, I wouldn't describe it as friendly. I would describe it as adversarial. We want the gun for us. You want the gun to manipulate us. You called me Mr. Dubois. Why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard. I call you Harry. I don't think that's quite what we meant. That's what the Hang of the Corpse called you. Harry. So that's really my name? Harry? My God, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? In this game, 100%, because that's how it starts. I think the odds of that are very low. So Kim still doesn't believe that we have amnesia. He thinks this whole thing is a shtick. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game is first. I agree, Rhetoric. My memory is fine, Everard. I'm just testing you. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently, my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out with my big fat folder. Oh, your big fat folder, huh? Thanks. I wonder what's in the folder. Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. Yeah, he's slimy. I guess word has already reached him. No matter. No harm done. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? The lieutenant inspects Everard over his spectacles. Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Oh, dissing Kim like that. God, what a dick. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. Got a red check on that folder. We're already at 97% because our drama is so high. And we get plus one for having read the shipping folders before. But let's still play out what drama told us to do. Let's get this straight. What's my full name? It's Harry. Harry Dubois. Wait, I thought you are Harry Dubois. No, 
I'm really, really not. You are Harry. Okay. We can call that my alter ego. Okay, I like it. I can work with that. And I can work with you, Harry. Now, what else can I do for you? Do you know where I live, Everard? But of course, Harry. Your precinct is the 41st and you live in Jamrock. You're a Jamrock boy. A long way from home, but that's okay. Yeah, this is still my beat, sort of, I guess. It's a crossover beat between us and Kim's Precinct 57. He doesn't really seem to know any more about it. Yeah, okay. Do you know anything about my family? Do I have a wife or kids or... Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? I think I do. I'd be a wonderful father. Except for the drinking and the drugs and the erratic behavior and the occasional passing out. Well, yes. I'm sure you're going to make one little boy or a girl very happy and proud one day, Harry. You're telling me what I want to hear, Everard. What kind of cop does it say I am in that big brown folder of yours? Harry, you're not simply a cop. You're a star. A bright shining star in the drab law enforcement sky. Outshining all other stars. You're a superstar. You see, okay, so this is what makes it hard because Everard, he does get me. He understands that this is the Ballad of Officer Superstar. Of course I do, Harry. And I'm going to help you shine. I'm going to put you on all the big stages. Your name in giant neon letters. Harry Dubois. Why would you do that? You're a union boss. I mean, well, you purport to be. I know you're a crook, actually. Where did you get the folder? Ah, this. My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. My organization? This translates into, haha, you guys are so corrupt. Jerk. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? Yeah, Kim, push him. I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. Oh, look at this. Kim suspects something. So we, I guess you can't get higher than 97% because that extra one did not help us. Let's do it. If we fail this, man, maybe, maybe we just stop playing this game. As you look at the folder, Everard covers it with his hand and pets it. He's hiding it from you because it's not a real RCM folder. It's just another one of those brown folders you saw in the file cabinet. Mm -hmm. That's not an RCM folder, Everard. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. You are a squirmy bastard. He got the name from the Census Bureau and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. There's probably nothing about me in there. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? Yeah, I bet that pisses him off that we saw through his bullshit. That means he doesn't really know anything about you. He's just a big bully. A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. That is a pity, but I wouldn't want to be beholden to this jerk anyway. So the Census Bureau says my name is Harry Dubois? Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. He should already know this, but I've learned from before that we should go through these prompts anyway. Aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Am I going to ask? Hell, Harry. You spin kicked my strongest man in the face. I saw it from my window. Did you see it from your window or did you watch it on YouTube? There's a really good short that captures it too. Would you ask a man like that how he got into your container yard? Oh, nice. You don't have a window. It was a figure of speech, Harry. Of course I don't have a window. I'm in a container. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. You have a lot of people telling you a lot of things. What's in the container that's outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. There's something special about it. It was attached to the Kavalsund crane. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. I wonder if maybe we just gave him a clue, and so now he's going to empty the container out. Maybe that wasn't a smart move. Smooth-talking. Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. Yeah, I still don't understand why it's a rhetoric challenge to open a container. 
and our odds were junk anyway. So I don't know, but maybe now we'll have a bonus. Okay, let's ask him about Joyce. I met Joyce, the company rep. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. How busy can you be? You're just sitting here. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Just pals? We're all trying to do what's best for Martinez. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I helped you get the body down. And I'm helping you find your gun. I'm not a jealous guy. Ah, in a not-so-subtle way, he is reminding us of all the things we are beholden to him for. Whoa, that's so nice of him. Suspiciously nice. Are you sure? I find it a little odd. I'm just a nice guy, Harry. I wouldn't be where I am now if I wasn't nice. Politics is all about emotions, and I want you to have positive emotions when you think of me. No, you don't. You want me to become your toady. Okay, then. Positive emotions it is. You like positive emotions. I'm unsure Harry remembers feeling any positive emotions. I told Joyce that I met you. It's perfectly okay. Even if you've told her everything we've talked about, it's absolutely fine. What happened to the previous negotiator, Mr. Galmont? What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. He made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you let an ally like that go? He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. You called him a midget. Harry! I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? I'm certain that you would. I'm not sure that Joyce is unbiased, but I just don't trust anything that comes out of your mouth. Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. Mr. Gomo is apparently a midget. It's hard to say if he really lost his temper, or if this is another one of his tricks. This man almost never angers visibly. I believe that. He's very smooth. Joyce said the previous union leader vanished under suspicious circumstances. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. What? Casserole? What? Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. That was like 20 years ago. Why would he even remember that? He's so full of crap. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. Funny, Joyce didn't mention any casserole. Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. Maybe it was a rabbit stew. Or a hairdryer. Or an iron. The point is, her heart wasn't in it. Mine was. Is it possible that her heart wasn't in her chest once you got done with her? This particular brand of humor he has, it makes for a fine distraction. I'm not distracted. I'm laser focused on this guy's nonsense. Why haven't you let her in to see you? He's talking about Joyce. If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. That's an interesting response. Okay, let's talk about something else. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. So he's feeding me what he wants me to say to Joyce? I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Okay, I'll remember that. But I bet you have a ton of secrets. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. Okay, hey, Everett. It's a big, long speech. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. I didn't realize conceptualization was all about gossiping. That's funny. This is weird. Not nice weird, but okay. I'm told the union is involved in the local drug trade. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any jolly fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? The reaction appears to be sincere, but 
It's impossible to tell with this guy, honestly. You know what? I think we would say no comment. We're going to try not to give anything away. Harry, you wound me, Harry, in the heart. But I trust you to put this to bed. Do what you must, and let's change the subject, shall we? Sure, let's change the subject, Everard. He's hiding his real reaction beneath courtesy. Yeah, because he's worried, because he's, I'm sure, engaged in the drug trade. Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. Yes, you're a very straight arrow, Kim. You too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. Yeah, because you think Team Harry is malleable. You know Kim is not. None taken. Do we have anything else to do here, Harry? Let's say we're at least reconsidering opening that door. A fantastic change of heart, Harry. Go talk to Manyana down by the gates. He'll brief you and give you the key. Nice, so we're not committed yet. We can always change our mind before we finish talking to Call Me Manyana. Just open one little door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. That's it. Anything else we should discuss? I think he wants the door unlocked so he can off whoever it is. Everard, I'm going to leave now, but we might talk again later. See you soon, Debardeur. Just kidding, but not too much. I think Debardeur is one of the people in the Union. Oh boy, Superstar is up at 15. Communist is at 15. Nice. Still doesn't register that we are Harry Dubois. Okay, let's head out. I'm not certain yet what we're going to do, but we'll figure out something. I guess we could go to Call Me Manana. We could go back to Joyce. Then I just feel like we're just shuttling back and forth. I imagine there's a lot of things that are triggered by time passing or us separating from Kim or sleeping. We know that we're going to be able to gain access to the other side of the canal uh, tomorrow morning. Actually, we're going to go to the first because I want to be able to make whatever decisions I want to make without dying of, of embarrassment. We have five bucks to spend so we can get some magnesium or the hypno guanolate or whatever it's called that gives you three morale charges. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Okay, we're going to take this hypno gamma. Okay, here. I hope St. Batiste makes you feel better or something. Thanks, clerk. I believe we didn't get any more trash since the, the last time. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten cents. Excuse me, I have the tear bag, but no tear. Can I still use the tear machine? No. You need tear to use the tear machine. <laughs> it's worth a shot. What's in here again? You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. Yes, thank you. We can't afford it, and I wouldn't buy it anyway right now. Not for one endurance. Maybe we should buy some cigarettes, though, because we have a quest for it. How much experience do we have? 18. Eh. Although, hmm. We have had no success bumming cigarettes off of people. Let's see what they cost. A colorful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles line the shop wall, inviting you closer. Again, I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. So the alcohol all seems to do plus one physique, minus one morale. Wait, plus one physique? Wait, is, does that mean that we get a plus one to every skill associated with the physique attribute? Ooh, I wonder if there's one of these for Psyche. That would be great. Oh yeah, see, cigarettes seem to be intellect. Oh man. We don't need more intellect. Although, see, we could smoke these because we have no health to speak of. I mean, we have plenty of health. The problem is we have no morale to speak of. I guess, oh, I 
290. Oh, we can't even afford it anyway. What am I doing? <gasps> what is this? Whoa. These are new. Do you sell any under the counter vices? No. Fritz only sells legal drugs, like the law says. But do you sell speed at this establishment? Huh? Speed. Like. Speed. Speed. No. Frit doesn't do that. She blinks at us, bewildered. Of course not. Frit is an establishment that acts within the law. Is that all, detective? Kim, come on now. It doesn't hurt to ask. Bah! What's the point if they don't even sell the good drugs? That's what I'm saying. I assume that it was electrochemistry. I didn't see, but... Yeah, we've got quests for this stuff. Help us out, lady. I think we should put Kim to bed, you know, tuck him in and stuff, and then go traipsing around on our own. Let's go upstairs. Maybe we'll sing him a lullaby. Okay. Oh, what's this? There's something yellow in our room? Hey, Kim. See you tomorrow. Yes, goodbye, Kim. He's no longer in our party. Can we pick up this bottle? No, but we can pick up whatever this is. Empty cassette case. Okay, so looking at the clock, I think this is probably a good time to end the episode. Now that we don't have Kim, I think when we come back, we're going to explore a bunch on our own. But for now, I'm going to end the episode here. Thanks very much for joining me. Please feel free to offer any suggestions. Try to minimize the spoilers, but you know, if you gotta spoil something because it's so cool and you don't want me to miss it, I certainly understand. And uh, as always, remember to have your pet spayed or neutered, but not both. <laughs>